and activism to be like yo it's one thing to change a guy on facebook's mind it's another thing to change a rich guy's mind so i started thinking about that how do you actually change the mind of somebody that doesn't see people as people that's when it got really different and i'm like well i gotta up my stature in life and shit and understand data better because the entire world's data centric it's less political centric you're right and all these politicians pay data analysis firms to know way more than they're supposed to and the level of susceptibility on interneting is fucking weird right now i don't know it's a scary time but i also find that there's an age curve on it where the younger you go the wiser they get and that is beautiful to me the fact that like a bunch of young internet savvy people don't believe the bullshit and it's a bunch of old people arguing on facebook is also just like the most i can sleep at night shit forever because the young people's gonna have our backs and they're gonna fix shit they're gonna like approach problems with such dynamic brains that like stuff we failed to do for decades is gonna be easy to them and i just know that in my bottom of my heart and i'm just so comfortable yeah. knowing that they're cooler than us and that's it's just the most comforting shit like but you look at old people I suppose the younger generations are getting i guess like the younger generations are becoming more and more progressive over the years but it's not becoming more and more i mean it, it's know. not even just canada or the states it's like when i went no, to no, the world over the world over so it's like yeah. i don't know yeah it's weird i feel like the world the, the younger generations like even even let's take us millennials for example in contrast to our, our parents generations like the boomers when society was a bit more segregated you know what i mean just for example for an extreme example um and i don't mean just like black and white i mean like even like catholics and protestants french and english shit like that and like there was a lot more segregation there was a lot more people sticking into their communities or whatever you flash forward 30 years 40 years you have us millennials who were born in the 80s and 90s who um grew up around different and started to associate ourselves and identify with all kinds of different people and we started to see life in a different way so if we flash forward to the generation who are being born now and the younger generations who are upcoming and shit like that it kind of makes sense to me that the more and more you're right um, the younger generations are going to well, like, i guess see the world in a more broad perspective and even take like language issues you're gonna tell me that little french kids up in the middle of nowhere quebec ain't all up on english culture just on the internet being available now you know like the internet's yeah, yeah. finally there that's a big statement because 10 years ago there might not have been internet in a lot of these places type thing and like who the fuck can't speak french under the age of 25 like unless you just got here and you never had a reason to everybody's fucking bilingual at a certain age that and the, the youth because you yeah. just they're like yo fuck that i want to make money in this province but there are some people our age and a little bit older than ourselves or much older than ourselves who grew up in a time when you didn't chill with other people who spoke other languages huge facts and that created a bias for you and, you, huge and as an adult even though you know better as an adult you still have this little bias in your head that makes it hard to want to learn french learn english learn whatever the fuck mm. you know i, I was it. lucky like i remember being 11 12 and fighting with you know, we were the irish kids and then there was the french kids and we would fight in the lane ways and all this dumb shit right and by the time we were 19 we were all chilling on the bleachers together you know what i mean at the courts everybody was chilling together yeah i'm um, not gonna lie it, it took a while but that that whole little friend the whole them versus us complex begins to break down you know yeah, for me it was Tinder. I started trying to date French girls and they said my accent was cute. And I'm like, oh, say a fucking word. Moi, je parle français maintenant. My accent's trash. I speak French pretty fucking fluently. Um, but it's also like you go to work and you realize like it's just like easier or something. Or like you'll be in a presentation and if you don't understand French and you see the look on the person's face when they have to do it in English and shit, you're like, yo, but when you're like, yo, moi je comprends, c'est correct. Like they just let you, they run it. Like it's just like politically speaking, yo, you can't make money in this province proper without like speaking French because you're never going to be friends with the right people. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's more yeah. important that's just that the way your boss I mean, wants to play and golf. And that's something I'm willing to accept. And that's something I've accepted pretty much my entire life that like, yeah, like French is the main language here. And that's, that's more that's like what it is. my parents. It's part of our identity here. And that's cool, whatever. And I can speak French relatively well. 
but it's, it's I think um, more like my parents will never speak French at an adequate enough level like that's just facts like they're fucking in their 50s how the fuck are they gonna start speaking French proper because Quebec said so and where the fuck are they gonna go too that's the other part like well, you can just leave and go where they don't make money so there they, should be an aspect of Quebec society that it actually does appeal to the Anglophone community because we've been here the whole time well you know i would I mean? argue it's not uh, quebec bullshit. law society that i'm attracted to it is just montreal i am not really that loyal yeah, to okay. quebec i'm loyal to montreal that's my home i just i just mean in like a in a in a, a socio-political identity kind of way that you know what i mean that if, yeah. if you're a quebec was it is you have to speak french right but the fact is sorry <clears throat> switch back the fact is uh there's been <laughs> there's been anglo-speaking people here you know what i mean since since white folks have been here you know what i mean since well, colonization I mean, it was yeah. anglo so until really what? Good. honestly it was what the mid 90s when they like won and then it got really french and then honestly it wasn't that french at first no. dude it wasn't that it, french well, no no it absolutely was it, it was it just um <clears throat> what mean, was going to happen was in the 90s it happened before actually before the 90s no, but I, it happened almost i'm saying when the referendum the 90s, happened the exit is yeah, happening yeah. so you're talking more about separatism what i'm talking, talking about, about is separatism. population shifts so up until 95 there wasn't the great exodus of english motherfuckers that happens when all the business capital shift over and at that moment toronto That's becomes true. way more important if you speak english and there's is a cultural center artists start going there everybody starts going there the hub of anglophones start That's going true. there and then since then dude right away we didn't feel it because st luke was still mad english and shit you know where i was at um question luke is not mad english no more it took a while it took a while for like places like ndg to really start getting friendshipified and shit like that but nowadays man bro it's like there's it's not like ndg isn't stupidly english still because it really is but like you can see the at like an institution level like when you try to do your vaccination shit on the fucking internet and it's fucking hard to make it load in english and even though you loaded it in english not all the web fields are in english because fuck you you speak english <laughs> and that's i guess sometimes shit. it gets that rough then. and then it's yeah. like yo i mean it's my it's like the fucking vaccination shit translate the fucking web form my guy and it was one field that just really bothered mm -hmm. me because i noticed shit like that um and like yeah, it just freaks me out, man. It's going to freak me out the day that, like, I'm in real big pain and I got to go to a hospital and have some French motherfucker speaking French at me and I'm just not ready for it. Because, yo, I'm not sure that I can handle French in extreme moments when I need to be thinking clearly kind of things. Well, you just, you do your best. And also on his end, he should know, especially if he's working with the public, but, to some extent. But they don't have you to anymore. I mean? And language. that's facts already. I know, but I... I just feel like, you know, a lot of this would be erased if we all spoke our second language and accepted our second language. But I do feel like nah, when you're it comes right to like medical kind of shit, target on the Anglo mm, community. Here's the thing, man. I speak French pretty fucking good. I don't know that I really want to deal with medical, legal, or governmental shit in French exclusively. Because that's, it's just like the entire time I'd be having a conversation, I'd be in like a state of stress as like it matters and i don't know that i understand everything and yo i don't know french jargon. not if you learned french enough that you were comfortable enough with it you know what i mean i know if, basic like, shit I've, i don't know terms like jargon is where it gets hard like, right like it's when you have to know yeah, yeah. specific i mean shit. like the more i find i find it's less about trying to learn it in like a classroom setting or whatever the case and it's more about actually like speaking to people that speak a different language oh, nobody talks Man, about when I was government like, shit in french I mean, like, look, in terms of French, we're working in kitchens, like in a gay village in an old Montreal and shit, where like half, more than half of the staff is French speaking. <clears throat> I had to learn all of the terminologies for all the kitchen stuff, for all of the food and all the equipment and shit like that on top of like, like you said, the jargon and, and the little expressions and shit like that. And that's what helped me <coughs> develop my French a little bit more. The more you hang around with people that speak other languages, the more it spills over into you. When I was a kid, I used to chill with a, I used to chill with a kid in my, that lived in my dad's building, um, and his parents were from South America. One was from Bolivia, the other was from Costa Rica. Anyways, um, so I used to hang out with this kid who spoke three languages, um, and he would help me speak French, obviously, but I would actually pick up some Spanish, and still to this day, like, habla espanol just a little tiny bit. Yeah, me too, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Like, not all that much, like, but I'm, not, I'm, I'm all right with conversational. 
I'll do business in French. I'll fucking freestyle in French. We're talking about yeah, medical see, yeah. shit. We're talking about legalese. Yeah. We're talking about shit yeah, where yeah, yeah. like yeah, yeah, one yeah. missing. Oh. Yo, bro, if I'm in the hospital and the guy's like, are you allergic? And I misunderstand the word, are you allergic? I could die kind of thing. That's scary to yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I don't know that I can just pick up enough fucking... I think that's an extreme example, though, because I think most people that work in hospitals can understand, at least if it's life or death situation, they can understand communicatively I mean, their second language. I, I totally, you know what I mean? For now. That's the thing is, we're talking about for now, but, you know, in 1995, we couldn't have predicted what could have happened now, and the government is absolutely stacking shit to, like, assimilate even further and heavier. They do shit where they gerrymander fucking districts, so there's less English representation in Montreal. They took away a district in Outremont recent, like, in the last five years. Like, shit like that happens. So it's like, I don't know, dude, I'm skeptical about the government's willingness to comply. Like, Montreal just said, fuck it, we comply, let go. I'm like, oh, that's what it is. I guess that's what it is, right? Cause, and then Legault's going to probably win again because why would he fucking lose? The rural people love him. So that's like bad news bears for Montreal. Mm-hmm.